Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this short video I'm going to check the Emacs Magnum Mini F4 all-in-one stack. Now the reason this video is going to be short is because unfortunately my package was damaged during the shipping and something pierced through it and destroyed the connector of the ESC and also broke one capacitor of the flight controller. So this is a very unfortunate but it can happen. But Emacs, come on, you should do a better job with packaging. The first generation of the Emacs Magnum, the full size one, was shipped in this plastic case and if you would have shipped the Magnum Mini F4 in one stack in this kind of package it wouldn't have happened. I know things happen but you can prevent it and I do hope that I'm going to get a replacement unit soon and then I'm going to be able to properly review it and add the missing parts for this review. So basically this is the upgrade version of the Emacs Magnum Mini V1 which featured a 12 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC and an F3 flight controller. Now this upgrade unit features a 32-bit 4-in-1 35 ampere ESC that supports up to 6S LiPo batteries which sounds on the paper at least pretty great and in addition the F3 flight controller was upgraded to an Omnibus F4 flight controller. In addition now this stack comes also with a BTX it has a selectable output strength of 25 and 200 milliwatt and supports smart audio. Now let me show the contents of my damaged package. So as you can see it comes in this kind of form which is not protective enough because if something hard is pressed against the package it can just bend and that's the reason the connector which you can see over here I also tried to fix it without any success was broken and also one of the capacitors is also broken. I did put some solder on top in order to try to fix it but anyway I wouldn't trust this flight controller and I'm not going to be using it. So this is everything that came inside the package. First of all we've got the bottom board which is a 32-bit 4-in-1 35 ampere ESC. It supports lapper batteries between 3 to 6S and it features two 100 microfarad 35 volts capacitors. On the bottom if everything is okay we can find the connector. It has seven pins the four right ones are for the signal, then the current sensor, ground and VCC. Next we've got the Omnibus F4 flight controller. This is a very simple board, it doesn't have any free UARTs. It supports both DSM and SBUS, so these ports are for the SBUS, so we've got the DSM, ground and plus 3.3 volts. And over here we've got the connectors for the PPM and SBUS, so the first one is the signal, then plus 5 volts and the ground. In addition we can find over here two LEDs, then the micro USB port, boot button and on the front the connector for the camera so we've got the ground plus 5V and V-in. Finally over here we've got the connector for the VTX, so the left pin is the UART6 which is going to control the VTX smart audio, then we've got the video out plus 5V and the ground. The VTX is connected in this manner, we've got this button that's going to enable you to configure it, it has a UFL antenna connector and this LED indicator that will tell you the channel, band and the output strength that you're currently using. By default this VTX comes locked to 25mV so in order to unlock it you will have to power up the VTX while holding this button and then you'll be able to set it to 200mV. Next we've got two 14 AWG battery leads, a simple antenna and also an UFL to an SMA antenna connector, hitch rings, spacers and also an XT60 battery connector. The total weight of this all-in-one stack without any spacers and the antenna is 14.75 grams which seems pretty light for a 6S capable stack. However, just as a comparison, the weight of the XJB F440 stack is 11.08 grams so this one is actually lighter. The difference between these two stacks is that the Emacs is using instead of these pins which are not so reliable for connecting the EC and the flight controller now it's using this connector, so one end connects to the flight controller and the other one connects to the ESC. Now I do recommend that if you already have this product you should definitely secure this connector because it can be ripped off very easily. Another issue that I found while trying to fix this board is that you can see that these wires are plastic wires and they melt when I tried to re-solder the connector to the ESC and I replaced two of them with silicone wires that 
I thought maybe it's going to work, but it didn't eventually. So what I recommend you to do is to change these wires into silicone ones because they're going to be more durable. And I recommend to Emacs to ditch these wires and use more high quality ones because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this stack cost $100. So this is definitely not a cheap all-in-one stack. So I think that using silicone wires would have been more appropriate than using these cheap wires. The VTX is mounted on top of the flight controller in this manner using these pins. This is also not a very reliable way of connecting the VTX to the flight controller. My connector already shows some signs of breaking. Make sure to properly use the spacers in order to secure the VTX to the flight controller and also make sure to protect this part because in case of a crash it might break very easily. So this is going to be the end of my short overview. Hopefully, as I mentioned, I'm going to get a replacement unit from Banggood and then I'm going to be able to post some flight footage because in the end of the day, the most important thing is to see how it's going to perform. But still, it's also important to have a more durable product and also good packaging because on the paper, this stack looks like a very promising stack. It can support up to six S Lipo batteries. The flight controller has a built-in buzzer, which is nice, but I think that at least one more UART could have been great. And as for the VTX, of course, I will need to test it. But again, I think that a better way to connect the VTX to the flight controller would have been using this type of connector than this one, because this one doesn't seem to be very steady. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this stack, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.